Hello and welcome back everyone. Now in most countries, the operated dentistry is subdivided into three different categories. This includes the operated dentistry itself, the endodontics and the peds. And among them, endodontics is a very vast and a separate subject. In fact, in some countries, specialization in endodontics is treated as a separate field. And today we will be starting this new and one of my favorite subjects that is endodontics. So in simple words, endodontics is simply the science of the internal anatomy of the tooth. And hence it deals with the anatomy, the pathology and the treatment that concerns the internals of the tooth, that is the pulp of the tooth. Now for a general dentist or a dental student, the basic knowledge about this internal anatomy is very important in order for the dentist to identify the pathology concerning the pulp and then devise a proper treatment plan for that pathology accordingly. So today we will start by discussing the basic internal anatomy of the tooth. Now as we are aware, the tooth is divided into two parts, that is the crown and the root. The crown is a portion that is covered with two heart tissues that are the enamel and then the dentine, while the heart tissues of the root are the cementum and then the dentine. The part where the enamel meets the cementum or the crown meets the root is known as the cemento enamel junction. Now the crown of the tooth is also divided into two separate parts. One is the clinical crown and the other is the anatomical crown. So the clinical crown is a portion which is visible in the oral cavity or in other words the crown that is above the gingival level is known as the clinical crown. While the entire crown is known as the anatomical crown. So the entire crown that is a portion covered by the enamel is known as the anatomical crown while the portion that is visible in the oral cavity is known as the clinical crown. The clinical crown can increase or decrease depending upon the gingival level. As the gingiva recedes the clinical crown will also increase in size. I will later on explain why this is important but for now let's just understand the simple concept. So this is the basic anatomy that most of us are aware of. But now let's move on to the core or the pulp of a tooth. So the inside of the tooth is also subdivided into two portions. The portion that corresponds to the crown of the tooth is known as the pulp chamber and the portion that corresponds to the root of the tooth is known as the canal. The pulp that is present inside the chamber is known as the coronal pulp while the pulp that is present inside the canals is known as the radicular pulp. So first let's discuss the chamber. So the chamber of the tooth can be thought of as a room that is filled with pulp that is named as the coronal pulp. And since a room always has a roof and a floor so the chamber also has a roof and a floor. So the roof is the part which we normally encounter while opening the chamber during a root canal treatment. The level of roof usually corresponds to the level of clinical crown and as I've already said the clinical crown is a portion that is above the gingival level. So by looking at the gingival level we can make a rough estimate of how much we need to drill during the chamber opening of the root canal treatment. Because vertical drilling during root canal should only be limited to the roof of the chamber. Or in simple words, by looking at the gingival level, we can make a rough estimate of the amount of vertical drilling necessary to reach the roof of the chamber. This is just for your knowledge as I will be discussing the minute details of the root canal treatment in my future lectures. So moving on to the floor of the chamber. Now the floor is the end limit of the chamber and it is here where the crown of the tooth terminates. So the floor of the chamber is the portion that marks the limit of the crown. Now if we view the floor of the chamber from the occlusal surface, we will observe that the floor has small openings. These openings are known as the orifices and these orifices are the starting point of the canals and hence the orifice leads into the canal. The number of orifices on the floor depends on the tooth. Like for example in interiors we mostly have a single orifice. In premolars we may have one or two orifices and in molars we usually have three or four orifices. Each orifice will always lead into a separate canal. These canals may then remain separate throughout the root or merge into one another to form complex anatomy. But this is a topic that requires detailed discussion which I will be covering in my future videos. So for now let's just understand the basic anatomy. So as I said the opening of the canal that is present on the floor of the chamber is known as the orifice. This orifice leads to a canal and finally the terminating point of the canal where the canal ends is known as the apex. It is here where the pulp vessels and the nerve exit the tooth. 
So the starting point of the canal is the orifice and the terminating point of the canal is the apex. Now along the length of the canal there may be sometimes present small extensions of the canal which directly lead into the outside periodontium. These are known as the lateral canals or the accessory canals. These are very small extensions of the main canal and contain small vessels along the path. So this was the entire basic anatomy of the pulp of a tooth. So just to recap, we have the chamber that corresponds to the crown portion of the tooth and the canal that corresponds to the root portion of the tooth. The pulp that is present inside the chamber is known as the coronal pulp, while the pulp that is present inside the canal is known as the radicular pulp. The chamber has a roof and a floor. On the floor of the chamber, we have the opening to the canal that is known as the orifice. Each orifice leads to a separate canal and the terminating point of the canal from where the blood vessels and nerves exit is known as the apex. During a root canal therapy, identification of all of these features is very important as this may very well determine the success or the failure of the endodontic therapy. We will go through all of the important details, the basic theory important for exams and also clinical knowledge that is important for any endo treatment. If you want to understand more, I suggest you read my blog on endodontic anatomy on my website. Link will be present in the top right corner and also in the description. So I will meet you people next time. Till then, take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe and goodbye.